Game Theory Part 1. In this webcast we're going to learn how to solve the game. A solution concept is a methodology for predicting player behavior intended to determine the optimal actions along each trajectory. Like standard finance theory, standard game theory assumes that players behave rationally. That is, decision makers choose their actions based on internally consistent criteria. When we consider how to solve the game, we distinguish between simultaneous move games and sequential move games. So whether the players move simultaneously at the same time or after each other. Let's first consider the solution concept of simultaneous move games. 1. Find dominant strategies. For simultaneous move games, we should first consider whether a player has a strategy or course of action that outperforms all other strategies, independent of the actions of rivals. This is a dominant strategy. When we find dominant strategies, we can find the Nash equilibrium. 2. Not all games have clear dominant strategies. In that case, we eliminate dominated strategies. Although the dominant strategies of all players might not be transparent at once, the strategies that are dominated should be included. So we simplify the games. One should proceed by successive elimination of dominated strategies. At each stage, elimination of dominated strategies for a player at the previous stage might uncover dominated strategies for other players. And finally, leads to finding the Nash equilibrium. 3. Find a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. In cases where we cannot clearly find a dominant strategy or eliminate all dominated strategies, we can find a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies by cell by cell inspection and reasoning. 4. Not all games have a Nash equilibrium in pure strategies, but most games we can find an equilibrium in mixed strategies. In a mixed strategy, players assign probabilities to their actions, and in a mixed equilibrium, they randomize over their actions so that all players are indifferent between these actions. In a practical sense, this captures the value of being unpredictable, or preventing others from exploiting any systematic pattern in your behavior. This takes practical meaning in repeated games or in sports, like soccer or tennis. With penalty kicks in soccer, it doesn't make sense to always shoot to the left or to the right, even if that's your favorite corner, because the keeper will infer your behavior. Or in tennis, it makes sense to once in a while make a drop shot or a lap to be unpredictable for your rival. 5. Use backward induction for solving sequential games. Finding a dominant strategy is useful approach in simultaneous games. However, when the game is sequential, a dominant strategy might not be optimal because the nature of competition changes with the order of the game. In fact, we can influence our rival if we move first. The way to solve this is looking forward and reasoning back. This is called backward induction. 6. Find a subgame perfect equilibrium. A subgame is a game within the total game. And a subgame perfect equilibrium is a set of strategies for each player. Then any of these strategies is also a Nash equilibrium for every subgame of the game. So we search, solve all the subgame and find the Nash equilibrium there. And then Solve the game by finding a subgame perfect equilibrium of the total supergame. 7. We add to these rules of solving the game in game theory the real options valuation. So we use real option valuation, uncertainty equivalent valuation in the backward induction process for sequential games under uncertainty. When we use this real options valuation, we appropriately adjust for risk along the branches of the tree of the game. In the next few webcasts, we're going to apply the rules of the game and illustrate how you can solve different game theory situations.